Hey guys, so I am a bit rushed because I only have literally like 25 minutes to film this and do my makeup. So I'm gonna try to pack as much info as I can into this front portion. But if I forget anything, hopefully I remember to put it in my check-ins. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Powder Foundation. If you guys think that you've heard me say that before, you probably have because I did just review maybe a few months ago the Matte Velvet Skin Liquid Foundation. So they came out with a powder foundation version. I'm actually quite curious on how they pair together because if you guys have been Follow me for a while you know I used to use a liquid foundation and then set it with a powder foundation but I'm not gonna be trying that out in this video but if you guys want me to I will try it out in future videos this is the packaging that it comes in pretty much standard for all makeup forever products I did open it and kind of show it to you guys on my Instagram story I have it in the shade Y445 which is the shade that I also have in the matte velvet skin liquid foundation this packaging is very like luxe it looks like you spent some money on it it looks like something like a makeup artist would have in her kit his or her kit so this is what it looks like when you open it up it looks like it's going to match me pretty perfectly it also has like this little I don't even know oh it's like a sponge kind of thing I don't know I don't know about you guys but I really don't like when brands include stuff like that because I feel like okay you could have put the whole powder in here I have brushes but I don't know maybe a lot of people don't but yeah so this is what it looks like about the foundation they call it the next generation mattifying foundation all it says after that is that it blurs your imperfections for 12 hours and leaves a lifelike second skin water resistant finish so I'm not like an expert with powder foundations but that does seem like it's going to be next generation if it lives up to to those claims because you know how sometimes Mm. It comes in 30 shades, which is pretty typical for Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundations. I can't quite remember how many shades came in the liquid foundation. I actually, honestly, to be honest, I don't even remember what I think about this foundation. I try so many foundations, but you definitely can click the eye in whatever corner it's in, and I will have that foundation review linked. So anyway, I'm going to prime half my skin because we realized a few videos ago that you guys would prefer that. When I was thinking about this foundation, review I didn't quite know what I wanted to use as the primer on half my face because I don't have like a huge experience with powder foundations I don't know if I should use a hydrating one or a smoothing one or whatever one that I want to so I'm going with a more hydrating route so I'm going to use the Olay Henriksen banana bright face primer I used two pumps and that might have been too much but I'm blending it in so it's gonna be alright even though I said I don't have huge experience with powder foundations I do know that I like to apply my concealer first before I apply my powder foundation because it just looks a lot better when I sit on top of it so for concealer I'm going to use one of my favorites is from milk makeup it's the flex concealer but this is definitely a lighter concealer to kind of give me some brightness I look so crazy but I promise it's gonna come together on the end I was contemplating even showing you guys my face right now but I need to move forward and act normal so I'm going to set my concealer with the color a girl professional loose powder one of my favorite powders I like to tell you guys what concealer and powder that I'm using just because it definitely matters now let's get some color to the face I'm like trying to hurry up so I'm gonna apply the powder foundation now I've never tried this brush but I feel like it will work really well for applying a lot of the coverage and blending out at the same time it's the Revlon buffing foundation brush so I'm going to dip it into the powder and that's how much I have on the brush whoa <laughs> that is a full coverage like straight away it seems much darker once I apply it to the face than in the pan it tastes like like candy that's strange I wonder if that's what I tasted or if that's something else because <laughs> it doesn't smell sweet I don't know I don't know this seems like not the same shade is in the pan like it looks so much darker on my face I don't know about this but it's definitely full coverage well for my skin because I really don't have a whole lot to cover up I'm not sure I like this <laughs> <laughs> just being honest it's more of like a red undertone and this like normally it's more yellow <sighs> I don't know if it's it's probably not coming across on camera because typically it doesn't because you guys would be like it looks good to me and I'm like no 
but in person it's like my face is red and it looks like i have powder on maybe if i had a different shade it would be better like maybe something a bit lighter i'm going to finish the rest of my makeup i'm gonna add bronzer even though i kind of don't even need to darken my skin i'm gonna try to work with it and see what i can do so i just finished with applying my makeup and of course it looks way better like once everything else is on because you can't really tell like the difference of the powder foundation and my neck but the reason why I think that it's still an important thing to take note of is because a lot of people don't do all of this makeup on an everyday basis. So if you are one of those people, I would definitely make sure that you get your perfect, perfect match if you can, if they have it. Only because if you don't do all of this every single day, then I definitely understand you want to make sure this is very seamless and you should get it matched like to your neck region as opposed to your hand or anything like that because your hand can sometimes be a bit darker than your face however the foundation looks pretty smooth it looks as though i applied a liquid foundation and then set it with a powder it looks really nice i can kind of see that my smile lines are starting to crease just a touch not super bad but they are starting to get there and um nothing on my forehead yet now that it's settled into the skin it doesn't quite look like i have on a heavy foundation layer except when you get like really close to my nose you can kind of see right there that it looks like it's gathering right here I don't know if it's the primer because it's kind of doing it on both sides just a little bit worse on the primer side so it may have to do with that but other than that it looks really good so I'm going to wear this for the rest of the day it is 11 20 a.m. so I will be back with check-ins to just show you how the foundation is wearing Hey guys, so it is 2.57 p.m. So it's almost been four hours of me wearing this foundation. I am oily pretty much all over. It's a very like low sheen, but it's definitely not matte anymore. You probably can't tell that well, but I definitely am pretty oily for foundations that say they're mattifying. But yeah, so I'm gonna leave the foundation on for a few more hours just so you guys can see a full day of wear, probably four more hours. And yeah, I am still smooth though so it looks really nice it looks pretty healthy it doesn't look like a powder anymore because it is more dewy or oily my smile lines aren't creased any more than they were when i originally told you guys so yeah both of those are good so i'm just gonna leave it on for a few more hours and come back and show you guys how it looks at the end of the day hey guys so it is 9 42 p.m so i've had the foundation on for about 10 hours and 20 minutes i would say that the foundation didn't get much worse from the four hour mark but it is a bit more oily but it isn't like extreme extreme like terrible the only really downside of this foundation is the color of it and the fact that it doesn't stay matte pretty much for no period of time <laughs> i was oily at four hours it doesn't have flashback i tested it in both like traditional regular indoor lighting as well as lighting with the lights off so that's a good thing as you can see i am you know what i take that back i am pretty like cakey oily in this area so i think it did get worse now that i'm looking up close i don't know if this is super flattering but far away it doesn't look bad it's not like the worst but it you can't tell like it's foundation right there and i kind of feel like that that's happening more so on the primed side kind of going over here to the mirror yeah, it looks like more on the primed side that it looks a bit more cakey than the non-primed side. So I'm wondering if you use like a mattifying primer or if you use a smoothing primer, if it will look better in areas that you have more visible pores. Earlier today and for most of the day, it looks really red. But for whatever reason, it looks pretty close to my skin tone. But that would mean that I would have to wait hours for it to adjust. So if you've tried this foundation, let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel as well as check out my previous video and I promise I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.